many people have been asking me how did I get my podcast up and running that quickly. Well, the secret is Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. And it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. It can also help you to distribute a podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from a podcast too, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. If you're interested, find out more. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This is Money Mind on CNA 938 and it's time for our Career Compass segment. I'm Chu Wee Lin with Stanley Leong. Crisis management refers to the use of strategies to help an organization deal with a sudden and significant negative event. If a company responds swiftly and effectively, the effect to its brand will be minimal and it will be able to recover and flourish. So what are the implications for companies amid the current novel coronavirus outbreak? What are some of the best practices that crisis managers should have taken into account when planning for such a scenario? Well, let's put those questions to our guest today. He is Adrian Tan, veteran HR practitioner and APAC leader at PeopleStrong, which is an HR platform. And if you'd like to join the conversation, you can call us at 6691-938 or text us at 96311-938. Well, Adrian, thanks for joining us this morning. I mentioned crisis management at the start. Would you say that this is the same as risk management? Uh, Strictly speaking, crisis management and risk management is slightly different. Crisis management is more concerned with responding to, managing and recovering from an unforeseen event. Whereas risk management is more concerned about identifying, assessing and mitigating any activities or events that could cause harm to the business. So it's slightly different. Right. Now, uh, besides the threat of epidemics, what other kinds of crises uh, can companies actually come, come face to face with? Uh, I think if you go back to history about a decade ago, you would remember things like a terrorism attack. So that could be one crisis that would have a major impact or maybe it's a, a financial crisis like what happened in, uh, during the Lehman Brothers era. So all that could be an unforeseen event which most businesses would not have catered for. And what should crisis managers consider when putting together their business continuity plans in the face of you know, issues like this novel coronavirus outbreak? Uh, I think it is important for them to uh, have a good understanding of what is required at a bare minimum level for businesses to continue to function. So under uh, good practices of business continuity, there would also be provision for, okay, if I need to restart the operations again, where is my secondary site? And if I go to a secondary site, would there be a server? Would there be a redundant server? So a lot of all these factors has to be come into play. And most importantly, you cannot just put this on paper and forget about it and just dust, the, dust it off when it's time to read it. You have to put this into practice as well. So periodic uh, role play or scenario planning to run through the whole thing the whole process will be uh, important as well. Yeah, like you said uh, earlier, you know, these threats can come in uh, various shapes and, and forms, uh, like terrorism, you mentioned, financial crises as well, can hit uh, organizations, uh, including, of course, the current epidemic that we're seeing. So when we talk about BCPs or business continuity plans, I suppose it's not a one-size-fits-all. I mean, the company really has to, you know, k- tailor-make almost a, a BCP for different kinds of circumstances, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely, Stanley, because different companies would have different kind of restraint. For example, if it's a typical corporate office environment, um, most of the employee would be, would, could easily just work remotely as long as they have a laptop and a decent internet access. Mm-hmm. But if you're running a retail outlet, if you're running an F&B outlet, that would not be very much possible. Your remote working wouldn't work. Your staggered timing wouldn't work. You just have to take note or, and try to apply other form of uh, control measures that would actually make sense for your business. Now, if you're, say, a small and medium uh, you know, organization and you never had to ever put in a, a BCP, a business continuity plan ever until, say, now where everyone's talking and, and implementing them, um, where, where can we actually go to to get some sort of an idea as to how our business can consider BCP and implementing them if we're a small organization, say? Okay, so for any small organization, in fact, for any organization out there, uh, what uh, happened many years ago, and my company was one of the first few adopted, was uh, the, S- the Singapore government was actually trying to push towards a BCM uh, quali- certification, business continuity management. So on, uh, on the internet, uh, you can find a lot of best practices when it comes to business continuity management. It is somewhat like an ISO process 
where you'll be taken through this many different steps processes to ensure that it's something that is tailor-made for your organization and understand what is the best practices behind it and how you can apply it moving forward. And of course, right now you will be able to see many different practices going around in the news because of the coronaviruses. So all this stuff are also good references, but importantly, it has to be tailor-made for your organization. And Adrian, how do you plan or create a business continuity plan for something like the coronavirus where there are so many unknowns? For example, they still haven't confirmed the length of the incubation period uh, for sure and they, they are not sure how easily it can be transmitted as well. So I think for businesses right now, the key thing is try to be safe and not sorry because there's really a lot of unknown parameters out there that uh, we are just giving drips and drips along the way. So uh, based on whatever information we are getting from the right and official sources, you could try to apply those measures. For example, uh, there has been uh, mentioned about certain uh, offices, certain areas where there might be suspected or uh, suspicion of coronavirus. So for organizations around those areas, they may want to consider not having their employee work in the office as much as possible. And for those employees that has to work in the office, of course, there could also be other measures to look into. For example, temperature taking, uh, issuing them mask, sanitizer, uh, and also try to minimize, try to help them to minimize contact uh, externally. So instead of uh, letting them go to the food court, the mingle with crowd, maybe the company could take a stand and try to order in for everybody. So a lot of different measures can be taken in place, even though we don't really know the full extent of this virus right now. And would you say companies are bre- better prepared now as compared with the 2003 SARS outbreak? Uh, for companies that have been around since 2003, I, I would say definitely. Uh, I would I still remember uh, some images and uh, incidents back then. Of course, right now we have the best practices of what has happened back then. And knowing what has happened back then, it really helped us to uh, to prepare for it. And I think a lot had happened in 2003 where a lot of over-panicking, a lot of, um, a lot of rumors, a lot of things that we should not do, we should do, uh, was actually applied back then, which of course helped us to better clarify what we should do moving forward. So I think over over this period of time, it is much better planned. And of course, all the official channels, uh, the message from the Prime Minister, all that helps for us to get a balanced view as well. Yeah, we'll talk about channels of communication in just a moment. Uh, but meantime, let's introduce you, shall we? Uh, Adrian Tan is veteran HR practitioner and APEC leader at People Strong, and he's speaking with us here on Money Mind. This is CNA 938. Uh, we are discussing the best practices that crisis managers should take into account when planning for situations such as the current novel coronavirus outbreak that we're dealing with. If uh, you would like to join our conversation, you can call us at 669-11938 or text us at 963-11938. Now, Adrian, how should companies effectively communicate on, on what to do, what not to do during this outbreak period? I mean, here at Mediacorp, at least from, from, you know, from where we are, uh, we have communications via email, via text messages as well, and a lot of posters being stuck all over campus here at Mediacorp. Um, what would you say would be the best way to communicate? I think that's a really good reference. Uh, companies must realise that employees may absorb the information at different touch points. Not everyone will read your memo, not everyone will read your email. So it is best to over-communicate, uh, be it at the bulletin board, through email, through your chat channels, uh, through stand-up meeting, at the toilet, cubicle, everywhere and anywhere that an employee could have a touch point, you would want to put up a notice. And of course, trying to keep them abreast of what is going on right now, beyond just uh, letting them know uh, the current incident, let them know within the organization, everyone has taken their temperature, everyone has sanitized their hands. So things like that. Over communication is really important. Well, Adrian, you, you yourself mentioned that one option is for staff to work from home. How do you implement this and minimize disruption to work? And on the flip side, how do you encourage people to maintain productivity? I'm, I'm not sure if you saw the report yesterday about six bank employees in Hong Kong who went hiking when they were supposed to be working at home. Ah, it's called go take a hike. Okay. I, I, to be honest, I, I personally experienced that when I was running a business. Uh, my staff was supposed to be working, happens to be in the cinema watching a movie. Uh, so I completely understand how that felt. Having said that, I think in today's context, uh, that is really inevitable. And as we progress to, uh, to the future of work, uh, looking at result, being result-oriented is much more than process-oriented. End of the day, as long as the deliverables, your key results is being fulfilled, 
I think the amount of time being spent on it is really not a significant focus. Having said that, of course, you would want to have some form of control measures if possible. Now, going back to your initial question, uh, for companies that have never practiced work from home, right now, for them to jump into it, it might be a bit tricky because you need to make sure your infrastructure is ready. You have laptop, you have cloud software, you have internet access, everything is well taken care of. But if assuming you already have that, just ensure that it's still regularity in communication. And of course, communication can be done in many ways. You could use an app like Zippy, you can use different kind of tools in order to keep it going. There's also project management application that could help to synchronize effort. Uh, but again, most importantly, having that touch point, having that check-ins on a regular basis is very, very important. And most, and, ex and most importantly, of course, is to set up very clear guidelines for everyone, what to expect, what to do, what you're expected to do, what is the outcome, and this is how we can work together and touch through this period. But a lot of organizations these days, you know, uh, given digital transformation, uh, a lot of uh, access points perhaps are, are more secure given that also, you know, um, working from outside may actually compromise on the security of information and, and access points for certain systems and such. So um, are there certain solutions that you'd be able to recommend in order to help us uh, circumvent this? Uh, actually, when it comes to enterprise solution, a lot of them have taken this into one of the key top priority. For example, many small businesses, usually when they do communication, they may use an application like WhatsApp. But WhatsApp being a consumer product is, is never secure. You can easily forward messages around. But if you look at enterprise solution like Zippy, you will be able to make sure that security is top notch. You will not be able to forward on these messages. For, for certain phones, you cannot even take screenshots. And of course, you have other applications that would uh, require you to have a 2FA authentication. So many security measures at the technical level will be taken care of by solution providers to make sure that uh, they try to account for everything uh, with the exception of human error, of course. If you just leave your phone uh, unlocked on the, at the full court and someone will to grab it, then that will be quite hard for any solution provider to tackle. Now, Adrian, in the event that an employee is quarantined, what are some policies that should be in place and is it fair to expect employees to use their own annual leave for this period? Uh, strictly speaking, I, I, I feel that that should not be the case because uh, the last thing you want is to have your employee, of course, let's, let's not go to a quarantine one first. Let's, let's say someone who is suspected of having, having high fever, but because I don't have enough annual leave, I insist of coming to office. You can imagine the repercussion. For those who are quarantined, I think it would still be a goodwill gesture uh, to help the employee understand that we are in it together and not to really nitpick and try to be so calculative because end of the day when, when everything has subsided, things have gone back to normal, uh, these are the small little stuff that people will still remember at the back of their mind. Yeah, it's really about developing and building goodwill with your own staff as well. They are the biggest stakeholders sometimes. Um, what are other good to have uh, HR initiatives that companies should uh, consider? Maybe free uh, masks giving out uh, to staff if, if they have stock in even. Oh, yes. Uh, I think that is very important right now, as you probably have seen uh, around the pharmacies in Singapore, masks, sanitizers, all these are so out. I'll just give you an example. Uh, my boss is based in India. He actually came to Singapore. He flew in with a huge stack of masks as well as sanitizers for us. Very so nice of him. Really a well yeah, it's very nice of him, a well-received gesture. And I think even a year, two years later, when we try to think back, we will still remember this kind of uh, this kind of memorable event. So things like that. And of course, if you want to go a step beyond, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, you could help to cater lunch for your employees so they don't have to go to the food court. And going beyond that, if you, are, you, if you somehow manage to get your hand on stockpile of Maggie Mee, maybe they'll appreciate that as well. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your experiences as well. We've been speaking with Adrian Tan, veteran HR practitioner and APAC leader at the HR platform People Strong. <laughs> hmm. It's the noodles for lunch. Uh, that was an idea just planted into my head. Uh, talking about BCP, we hope that your organization has already put them in place. And we hope that it's not been too much of, uh, you know, um, uh, throwing your, your work uh, into a little bit of a disarray. But I think it'll take a little bit of time to settle into perhaps what is the new normal at your organization with the work that you have to do. Um, and I like what he said about, you know, over communicating. I think uh, there's no other better time than now to just be over 
overly if you like naggy not naggy but in a way uh, ensuring that all staff at different touch points have the opportunity to interface with the messages that you are trying to put out especially when you roll out new plans new systems uh, new schedules as well earlier there was Adrian Tan joining us from People Strong this is Money Mind here on CNA 938 uh, 